Christmas to move the motion. Thank you, Mr Dowd. I hereby move the motion that this House should consider the future of enterprise zones in Waveney. Mr Dowd, it's a pleasure to serve with you in the chair, and I welcome my honourable friend, the Minister, to his place. The purpose of this debate is to highlight the success of the enterprise zones in the Waveney area and to make the case for amending the arrangements through which they operate in order to unleash further economic growth and job creation. If this is done, it will be very, we would be very well placed in the Waveney area and better able to level up, build back better and deliver clean and green growth. Enterprise zones in their present form were established by the coalition government. The original proposals were set out in the 2011 budget and the accompanying plan for growth. 24 enterprise zones were created during the 2010 to 2015 parliament, including the Great Yarmouth and Waveney Enterprise Zone, which has been run by the New Anglia LEP in conjunction with East Suffolk Council, that's formerly Waveney District Council, and Great Yarmouth Borough Council. In setting up the LEPs, the government asked, sorry, in setting up the enterprise zones, the government asked LEPs to nominate enterprise zone sites, taking into account economic potential with an emphasis on stimulating additional growth, new businesses, and new jobs. Vacant sites with little or no business occupancy were favoured. In the Waveney area, there are now four enterprise zone sites in four locations. Sorry, there are six sites in four locations at Mobs Way in Oldham, on the South Lowestoft Industrial Estate, at Riverside adjoining the port, and at Ella near Beckles. These enterprise zones have provided various incentives to promote the development of new business units. These include business rates discounts, a simplified planning process through local development orders, and access to superfast broadband. In the Waveney area, other than on, the small, the two, on two small extension sites, the business rates relief has now expired, Though all business rates growth for 25 years from April 2013 is retained by the LEP and reinvested in the area. This is an important and welcome source of funds that is invested in infrastructure improvements. The Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft New Anglia Enterprise Zone Partnership were awarded Enterprise Zone status in 2011 and the sites came into operation on the 1st of April 2012. In total, across the Waveney and Great Yarmouth areas, to date, they have attracted £44 million in private and public sector investment, have created 916 jobs, and have facilitated the development of 17.9 hectares, that's just over 44 acres, of new employment space. In short, Mr Dowd, they've been very successful. The enterprise zones in Lowestoft, Lowestoft got off to a very good start with the construction of 27 units on Mobs Way in Alton by MS Oaks Limited, the majority of which are occupied. The availability of the incentives that have outlined was the catalyst for Mark Oaks building these units and thereby meeting a latent demand for business accommodation in the area. This is a great example of the public and private sectors working together to deliver significant benefits for the local business community. This is being continued on the adjoining Woolsey Business Park, where 12 units are now fully occupied. Businesses there are from a diverse range of sectors, including energy, construction, warehousing, media, IT, and the manufacture of clay pigeon traps. Whilst this debate focuses on the future of enterprise zones in the Waveney area, it's also appropriate to point out that they have also been a great success in the constituency of my right honourable friend, the member for Great Yarmouth. Beacon Park has been exclusively developed for offshore, port and energy logistics based uses, whilst South Deans has also seen significant investment and is the home of CJAX, who are involved in offshore wind projects around the world. With the business rates relief having expired 
and with superfast broadband having been extended across the enterprise zone sites, there is now, Mr Dowd, a need to reinvigorate the enterprise zone project in Waveney. With this in mind, in 2018, three years ago, the new Anglia Enterprise Partnership made up of East Suffolk Council, Suffolk County Council, Norfolk County Council, Great Yarmouth Borough Council and the new Anglia LEP commissioned a study to provide a new development and investment strategy for the enterprise zones. The report included a review of current development, identified barriers to that development and proposed interventions across all sites. It highlighted that very few new development has been under, very, very little new development has been undertaken recently. This is a position similar to many locations throughout the UK and can be explained by relatively low property values set against rising construction costs, which makes new development difficult to justify. Moreover, COVID has exacerbated this trend. The report also identified low demand for new business units on the South Lowestoft Industrial Estate Enterprise Zone, where there is a large amount of undeveloped land and where rental values have traditionally been low. Development there is further constrained, as since 2013, the site owner has been reluctant to bring forward land for development. This means that approximately 15.97 hectares allocated as an enterprise zone site is highly unlikely to come forward for development over the life of the project. At the same time, demand for units, particularly in the clean energy sector, has shifted to, war to vacant sites around the port of Lowestoft. It should be pointed out, Mr Dowd, that since the enterprise zones were originally allocated, large parts of the port have been cleared and are thus now vacant and are thus well suited to allocation as an enterprise zone. Associated British ports who run the port are pursuing a proactive approach towards development, though they are constrained by the high cost of improving port infrastructure. Taking these considerations into account, East Suffolk Council now wish to reallocate the existing footprint of the enterprise zone by reducing the enterprise zone on the South Lowestoft Industrial Estate by 7.8 hectares, leaving 8.8 .8 hectares for future development. This 7.8 hectares would then be reallocated to the vacant areas around the port. This would then be available for clean energy and also fishing-related developments. This is a proposal for the reallocation of sites and not for a larger enterprise zone, and thus, my right honourable friend, the Minister, will be pleased to learn, will be cost neutral. It would meet the current demand for units, and it would enable the Enterprise Zone Partnership to invest Enterprise Zone funds into the relocated sites, making development more financially viable and the sites more attractive to occupiers. It's anticipated that this re reallocation would create over 300 jobs and over 40 new businesses and would generate between £1 million and £3 million of retained rates to be invested in the Enterprise Zone scheme over the course of the project. Mr Dowd, as I mentioned earlier, the business rate relief ha has been a great catalyst for promoting activity on the Enterprise Zone sites incentivising developers to build units and encouraging occupiers to buy or rent them. Now that the relief has expired, other than on the two small extension sites, this, this means of stimulating econo economic activity is no longer there. It needs to be put back in place, and if this is done, it will help promote development around the port and also on the other enterprise zone sites particularly at Mobs Way and at Ella. I would therefore ask the Minister to give full consideration to extending the rates relief incentive for a further five years. Mr Dowd, since the enterprise zones came into operation in Waveney in 2012, there has been a sea change in the focus of regeneration activity towards the centre of Lowestoft, where the port lies adjacent to the main shopping area which, like so many other high streets, has faced enormous challenges in the past two to three years. 
The proposal to reallocate the enterprise zone sites is in accordance and complements well the Lowestoft Town Investment Plan, which earlier this year helped secure a town deal of £24.9 million. Exciting new opportunities are emerging, and it is important that we do all that we can to ensure, to ensure that we realise their full potential. Leaf, Reef and Eastern Energy Hub on the Par Park are three such initiatives taking place in the area that I will briefly mention. LEAF is the Lowestoft Eastern Energy Facility, which has been brought forward by Associated British Ports, and in the first instance is a five-year plan involving an initial £25 million investment in port infrastructure to support the offshore energy industry. Three new deep water berths spanning over 360 metres, additional crew transfer vessel berthing capacity, and eight acres of supporting land will be provided. Reef is the renaissance of East Anglian fisheries, a community-led project which has come forward with a long-term strategy to regenerate the East Anglian fishing industry with Lowestoft as its hub. It is made up of representatives of the local fishing industry, East Suffolk Council, Suffolk County Council, Norfolk County Council, the New Anglia LEP, and CFASH, C, sorry, Seafish, and the steering group is currently chaired by myself. The strategy has been reviewed following the signing of the Trade, tra, um, trade and Cooperation Agreement with the EU this time last year, and funding has recently been received from the Blue Marine Foundation to start work on the implementation of the 11-point plan. Mr Dowd, I won't go through those 11 points in detail, but I will highlight three of the of them at this stage. Firstly, the promotion of sustainable fishing practices and the reduction of CO2 emissions, very much clean and green growth. Secondly, the need for investment in port infrastructure. And thirdly, the need for a similar enhancement of processing and marketing facilities. The reallocation of the enterprise zone will support these proposals which will create jobs, not just on fishing boats, but right along the supply chain from the net to the plate. Turning to the Eastern Energy Hub proposals, these involve the refurbishment of Gulliver, that is the existing wind turbine, and pairing it with electrolyzers to produce hydrogen. This could be then used by municipal buses and refuse fleets in East Suffolk, and first have a nearby depot from, from which hydrogen-fueled buses could run. In due course, one could move on to promote a hydrogen heating scheme in Lowestoft. As, I, as you see, Mr Dowd, there's an awful lot happening in this particular local area, and we need to use all tools we can to actually stimulate and invigorate it. In conclusion... As I have mentioned, I have two asks of the Minister. Firstly, that the 7.8 hectares of the South Lowestoft Industrial Estate Enterprise Zone should be reallocated to the port area adjacent to the town centre. This will meet the current demand from businesses and will generate funds that can be reinvested in infrastructure, in effect creating a virtuous circle of economic regeneration and which, as I have said, will cost the government nothing. Secondly, the rates relief incentive should be reintroduced for a further five years so as to incentivise developers to build units and then encourage occupiers to buy or lease, lease them to take up the numerous opportunities that I have briefly, out, out, briefly outlined. Mr Dowd, enterprise zones in Waveney are not an experiment. There is no need for a pilot. They have a proven track record of success. These two changes that I am seeking to the way that they operate will create jobs in a coastal community that has deep pockets of deprivation. They would unleash a wave of development across a range of sustainable low-carbon sectors and would deliver that trinity of levelling up, 
building back better, and creating clean and green growth. Thank you. Um, the question is that this House has considered the future for enterprise zones in Waveney Minister. Well, um, thank you, uh, Mr Dowd. It's a pleasure to serve under your uh, chairmanship. And can I start by thanking my honourable friend, the member for Waveney, for securing this uh, important debate today. He's always been, and I've known this even before I was an MP, an incredible community champion. He always has multiple projects that he is promoting, and he's normally very successful in making them happen. So I was um, very interested and excited by all the different things that he uh, set out that he was trying to achieve um, today. Let me start by turning to, to Enterprise Zones. Since their relaunch in 2012, Enterprise Zones have established themselves as a real uh, driving force for local economies, uh, unlocking development through infrastructure, attracting businesses, and creating jobs. Enterprise Zones are about delivering long-term, sustainable growth by enhancing cutting-edge technology and enterprise, and their purpose is to encourage local economic growth and support businesses. And to that end, they have been a huge success, as my honourable friend uh, said. I've listened uh, to my Honourable Friend's proposal with interest, and I thank him for his thoughts on the subject. Um, as he has pointed out, the enterprise zones in Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft are a testament to the success of those interventions, having created around 1,900 jobs and attracted over 70 businesses and brought forward something in the region of 51 million worth of private sector investment, an incredible record, really. And they are helping uh, to sow the seeds for our transition to a green economy too, uh, Lowestoft, as my honourable friend mentioned, mentions bases of operation for Galloper and for Greater Gabbard Wind Farms, which combined will produce over 850 megawatts of electricity, which is enough to power um, 800,000 homes across the UK, a really incredible amount. And Lowestoft is, of course, also home to Orbis Energy, a worldwide uh, centre of excellence which drives innovation and investment in renewable power uh, technologies. Now, we've said from the outset that the government-backed business rates discount would last uh, up to five years, and the enhanced capital allowances where they exist will be provided for eight years. Um, business rate retention will last for 25 years, giving councils a long-term source of revenue, which can be borrowed against to fund infrastructure or pooled to spend on other barriers to investment. And local authorities can continue to offer business rate discounts should they choose to do so, and many continue to use the brand of enterprise zones to attract investment. I'm afraid we have no plans to create any new or extend any enterprise zones. And my honourable friend's proposition to change the boundaries of enterprise zones would signal a precedent that we are wary of setting. Such a change would take up significant uh, resource, and we now have to focus on delivering the free ports programme, which was influenced heavily by uh, what we've learned from enterprise zones. However, there may be other upcoming ways that we can achieve uh, many of the things that my honourable friend is seeking to achieve. As our consultation on free ports uh, in 2020 showed, key aspects of the model like business rates retention, business rates uh, relief, commercial sports councils and local development orders, plus the provision of seed capital. All those things were taken from what we've learned from uh, enterprise zones and built into the free ports uh, model. And those free ports will be national hubs for trade, innovation and commerce, uh, regenerating communities across the UK and attracting new businesses, spreading jobs, investment and opportunities to towns and cities uh, up and down the country. And in March, we announced that Felix Stowe and Harwich were successful in their bid for a free port and officials are now working with that free port to develop their proposal. And that free port will provide jobs to the area surrounding Felix Stone Harwich and further afield also where those specialist skills will be required. It will also draw the attention of international investors to the opportunities in the wider East Anglia area, including the enterprise zones in Great Yarmouth and uh, Lowestoft. And if I could turn to the particular question of levelling up Waveney, as my honourable friend uh, will know, uh, levelling up is the absolute heart of the government's agenda. And the Enterprise Zone Programme and Freeports are just uh, some of the tools at our disposal to help level up our uh, communities. For example, if we think about uh, local growth funding, £290 million has already been invested in lo local growth projects in and around Waveney through the New Anglia uh, LEP, which I've had the pleasure of discussing offline with my uh, honourable friend, to boost jobs, build houses, leverage private investment and increase uh, skills too. And this funding has been used on a variety of local interventions including uh, 10 million from the local growth fund for improved flood defences in the lowest loft harbour, uh, which put towards the tidal gate for the inner harbour will not only safeguard over 400 households from flooding, but also support 22,400 uh, jobs. And 73 million has been provided to build the Gullwing Bridge, an iconic and uh, much needed third crossing, and which I remember my old friend uh, campaigning hard for, and the bridge will reduce congestion, regenerate the area and attract new investment for the local economy. 
And I also turn to the Towns Fund uh, process. The government recognises that towns like Lowestoft must be at the absolute forefront of our uh, levelling up agenda. And that's why the government launched town deals for areas across uh, the country to unlock their full economic potential. As one of the 101 areas selected to agree a town deal, Lowestoft uh, received 24.9 million in March uh, this year to support ambitious local pro projects to transform disused buildings and public spaces, uh, deliver new green transport and create opportunities for people to develop new skills. And that includes uh, 14 million to develop a new cultural quarter in the town, uh, providing a new leisure and cultural venue and enhancements to the marina theater. Over 2.8 million will go towards the development of the station square, a meeting place and a gateway point for the seafront and the town center. And 2.6 million will be used to improve the port area, which supports the growth that my honorable friend talked about in the clean energy sector and to enhance uh, the public realm. And can I thank my honorable friend for his work on that town investment plan, uh, which will see uh, that initial public sector seed funding and its catalytic funding unlock a minimum of 354 million of private sector investment into the area. A really incredible um, sum. And he and uh, his colleagues involved in the town uh, deal process could be really proud of what they are um, achieving. Now, my honourable friend talked about um, REEF, a brilliant local uh, initiative, and I really welcome the way that local uh, industry and local government in East Anglia have come together to consider how to create a more sustainable uh, fishing industry. I thank my honourable friend for his work as the chair of the steering group of it. Um, the REEF report contains some interesting ideas that the government will certainly be considering as part of our ongoing work on inshore fisheries management. And the government welcomes the work to review the reef recommendations in light of the EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement and to develop a new delivery framework. I know that DEFRA and marine management organisation officials have been discussing the framework with the reef project team and are very encouraged by its focus on more effective fish marketing in the region, utilising local opportunities and networks. And I know that my uh, friend is passionate about the role that East Anglia could play in uh, the emerging green economy, which he talked about in his speech. And I share his enthusiasm for uh, developing our emerging industrial strengths in areas like uh, offshore wind, uh, the use of nuclear and hydrogen fuels and carbon capture technology. Because the transition to net zero does present a real opportunity to support communities which have been both in potentially impacted by climate change and flooding, but also drive levelling up across uh, the country. And the government is working closely with local partners to ensure that we maximise the economic growth opportunities that emerge from the transition to that low carbon economy, as well as supporting communities around the country to adapt to the impacts of climate change. And in my honourable friend's uh, constituency, I know there are a number of examples I could point to towards uh, communities uh, taking advantage of these opportunities. Uh, for example, the uh, ambition to create a self-sustaining pub, a self -sustaining hub at the power park in Lowestoft, or the 25 million investment by Associated British Ports in the Lowestoft Eastern Energy Facility um, to create more quayside space, deeper water, as well as offices and additional facilities for crew transfer vehicles. So all these things are driving economic growth locally. Uh, we're proud to lead the world in ending our own contribution uh, to climate change, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because we're determined to seize the unprecedented opportunity to boost the local economies that it brings. We want to build back better from the pandemic uh, by bringing back greener and levelling up our country with new high-skilled, high-wage, sustainable jobs in every part of the UK. And as part of that, the 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution will be mobilising £12 billion worth of government investment, potentially three times that uh, from the private sector on top, and create and support up to 250,000 British jobs covering clean energy, clean transport, nature uh, recovery and innovative new um, technologies. And taken together, all these different programmes are helping uh, to maximise the economic potential of my honourable friend's constituency. And we can and will do uh, more. As my honourable friend knows from talking about it, the government will shortly be publishing a white paper which builds on existing action being taken across government, setting out a new policy regime that will drive change for years to come. Because some of the uh, challenges that my honourable friend talked about, those pockets of stubborn deprivation in his constituency, the challenges won't be solved overnight, but we are determined uh, to solve them. Uh, we want to restore pride in uh, places across the country, and we want people in these places once again to have the confidence that government is, is delivering their economic and social priorities and boosting long-term living standards and improving their 
uh, public uh, services. So I'd like to once again thank my honourable friend for securing this important debate. Um, uh, we are absolutely unwavering on our commitment to work with members from across this house to spur long-term recovery but from I this pandemic. I'll happily give away. I'm just grateful to him for actually highlighting the enormous opportunities that Lowestoft and Suffolk and East Anglia has to play in the transition to a low-carbon economy and how that really can create enormous opportunities for our area. And actually, we can be... It's not just a question of levelling up. We can be a global exemplar. I've heard what he said. I'm most grateful to him for what he said. But could I ask, when it comes to the what I think is the simple change, and which is cost-neutral, of reallocating the enterprise zone sites, he indicated that he didn't want to go down that route because of concerns about the precedent it would create. Can I ask that through correspondence, myself... East Suffolk Council and him, we can just continue to explore that one a little bit further. I'm grateful for my uh, honourable friend's uh, intervention. I'm, I'm absolutely happy to correspond and also to continue to meet with and discuss with him and uh, local councillors all the opportunities in the area, which he's done a brilliant job of um, highlighting um, today. Um, there are many uh, upcoming opportunities, including the future UK Shared Prosperity Fund, which is coming shortly and the potential for devolution to drive a whole multitude of improvements in the area and he's quite right to pick me up on this point about going um, uh, not just uh, tackling those problems of deprivation but also going from good to great and I'm very struck when I've been out in East Anglia uh, about the sense that we are on the edge of something really exciting there in lots of different ways so he's quite right to make that point I'm happy to continue the conversation um, after uh, this debate uh, because uh, what he's talked about today, the ideas he's brought forward, are really central to uh, the government's agenda uh, of levelling up uh, and building a recovery that sees uh, all parts of the UK uh, uh, recover strongly from uh, the pandemic and build a new and better economy and new and better public services. Thank you, Minister. The question is that this House has considered the future of enterprise.